Okay, so we're back. In the previous video, I mentioned that this terrain texture, although it looks pretty decent, we can actually expand upon it and add some neat effects to make it look a little bit grimier, a little bit dirtier, and make it look uh, much nicer than what it looks now. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the shader graph here in the hypershade back for our terrain, for our ground texture here. And the ground graph here is composed of a very few, a very few number of shaders, okay? All we have is a color map and basically a bump map down here connected to a Lambert. And that isn't very good. What we're going to do, we're going to expand upon this graph here, make it more complex, make it much larger, to be able to customize this shader the way that it looks and add some really neat effects to it to make this dirt look a little bit more natural and a little bit more interesting. Okay, And the first way that we're going to do that is by using something called a cavity map, also known as a dirt map. And what this is going to do, it's going to be layered on top of our color here and it's going to add a nicer, grimy, dirtier look to our texture, in this case this color map here of the ground. Okay, so let's get started, let's do that. Let's click on this checkerboard icon up here in the top left to open up the uh, create toolbar here. You want to make sure that you're set up with create Maya nodes. Okay, so if you're in the mental ray nodes, make sure you switch over to Maya nodes. Go down here and scroll down to under the 2D textures section. Go to where it says file and just left click once. And that's going to create a file node up here. We can go ahead and click on the checkerboard icon to hide the create toolbar. Okay, next thing you want to do is click on this button up here. The one with the six little squares, three gray ones in the top and three little yellow ones in the bottom. Click on that icon to go ahead and fix this up right here, rearrange the graph. And let's take this guy here. This is the new node that we created, by the way. It's empty right now, which is why it looks black, and it's called File 3. Let's double click on that node to open up its attribute editor. Okay. And here under File, we're going to go to Image Name. We're going to click the folder icon, and we're going to load up this image called Ground Calf Map, which is short for Cavity Map. We'll open that one up, and you can see here the texture sample. If we click on View, this is what we have. So it's a very high contrast black and white image. Basically, the way that this is going to work is the areas that are closer to white are not going to be affected as much. The areas that are darker and closer to black and dark grays and things like that are going to look grimier and dirtier. Okay, so we're going to close that. And next thing I'm going to do is close that. And I want to plug this cavity map into my Lambert shader. Now, if I open up the Lambert shader by double clicking it to open up the attribute editor, we have a color color parameter here. We have transparency, ambient color, incandescence. We've got the fuse and translucence and all these different parameters. But we really don't have anywhere to plug in this dirt or cavity map. Okay, so we have a bit of a problem. Hmm, how in the world can we use our cavity map or our dirt map here with our texture? Well, this is where we have to think a little bit outside the box and come up with customized solutions that Maya just can't provide. We have to do this ourselves, okay? So let's go ahead and explore how in the world we can do this. Basically, the idea here is to composite this cavity map or this dirt map with the color map up here. Once we composite those two and slap them on top of each other, we can go ahead and pipe that into the color channel of the Lambert node over here. So how in the world are we going to composite? How can we add this dirt map with this color map here, put them together so that Maya can use them for the color of the Lambert shader? Well, we have some nodes for that. Let's go back and open up the Create uh, Toolbar here. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep scrolling down past the 3D textures, and we're going to go down here to where it says Other Textures, and you'll see that there's only one node available called Layered Texture. Let's go ahead and let's uh, click on that to create a layered texture node. Let's go ahead and hide the create toolbar there. Don't need it for now. Okay, so here's our layered texture node. Let's go ahead and double click on it to open up the attribute editor. And this is what it looks like. Basically, if you've ever worked with any type of compositing software, like After Effects, or if you've ever worked with Adobe Photoshop or even Corel Painter, basically anything where you could take layers of images and composite them on top of each other, this is exactly how that works. We can layer different images. For example, if I left click in this box region here, I can create different layers that can be composited on top of each other. 
If I go to each layer simply by clicking on it to make it the current layer, I can go to the blend mode and I can change the blend mode very similar to the way that an image editing program works, like Photoshop. I can switch the blend mode to over mode, to add, subtract, multiply, difference, lighten, darken, and uh, I can saturate it or desaturate it, etc, etc. I think you get the idea. I also get control over the alpha, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so this is the way it works. The way it works is that the images all the way to the far left are the ones that are on top. So the way that this works is the images that are to the far left are the images that are at the top of the stack. So this one's going to be composited on top of this one. This one, the second one, is going to be on top of the third. The third will be on top of the fourth, and so on and so forth. The image all the way at the far right is the last one in the stack. I know it's kind of hard to make sense of it because they're not uh, visually, they're not on top of each other. They go from left to right. Uh, this should have probably be, been done by putting this from top to bottom, the way that it's, it's set up in other programs like Photoshop, for example. But as long as you understand that the leftmost image is the one on the top and the rightmost image is the one on the bottom of the stack, um, it'll make sense to you and you'll be able to, uh, to use this layer texture node without a problem. So if I want to get rid of some of these uh, nodes here, some of these textures in my uh, layer texture list, what I can just do is click on these little X's on the bottom and it gets rid of them. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. We can't get rid of this first one, by the way, because it's the, it's the default. There has to be at least one or else it wouldn't work. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and use this uh, layer texture node to basically layer our, uh, our textures inside of that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and Kind of resize the hypershade here so it fits a little bit better. Hit A on the keyboard. There we go. Nice. Okay. So what I need to do is move these guys out of the way. This guy's going to come in the middle here. And basically, the color map and the dirt map are going to go into this node here, the layer texture node. And then the layer texture node will go into the color channel or the color parameter of the Lambert shader here. Okay. So I'm going to right click on top of color here. And I'm going to go to break connection. And now the Lambert shader doesn't have the color map plugged into it anymore. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the middle mouse button to click and drag on the layer texture shader and drop it onto the color parameter of the Lambert shader, which will plug it in there automatically. In this case, the default color is green, which is why the Lambert's coming out green. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and it already did it for me. I went ahead and uh, if you open up the attribute editor for the layer texture node, so it opens up here on the right, middle mouse button click and drag on the color node here and just drop it right on top of the layer texture list right there and it'll be blue and if you hover over it with the mouse the color or the name of that node will pop up right here which is a good thing that we call the color or else you get some silly name like file number 221 or something like that which wouldn't make a lot of sense okay now the cavity map we also have to drop over there but uh, before we do, let's right click on top of it and go to rename and file 3 is not going to cut it so let's call it cav map. Perfect. Now we use the middle mouse button to click and drag that over here as well. Okay, so here's the cavity map, here's the color. Now we don't need this green one anymore and since it's not the only one in the list we can actually delete it by clicking on the little X. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now what we need to do is make sure that the cavity map lies on top of the color map. Okay, so right now it's backwards. You can see that the cavity map is on the right, which is the bottom, and the color map is on the left, which is on top of the cavity map, which is not going to work. So what we can do is simply use the middle mouse button to click and drag the cavity map and just pull it over here to the left, and you notice that you get these little and you notice that you get these little yellow sort of markings, and that that just shows you visually where you can drop the cavity map uh, in front of or behind an image. So if I were to create a whole bunch of new textures here, I could take this cavity map and I could drop it here, or I could drop it at the last position, or I could put it over here so it's the uh, fourth one, or I could put it over here so it's the second one. What I want to do is drag it so it's the first one. So I'll drag it all the way to the far left until it turns yellow right there in front of the color map, and I'll drop it, and now the cavity map is on top. Because the cavity map is on top, you'll notice that the layered texture swatch here updated. Okay, now let's go get rid of all these green ones. We don't need that. We just need these two blue ones, the color and the cavity. So now the cavity is on the left, or the dirt map is on the left. It's uh, on top of the color map. 
okay now what I need to do is switch the blending mode to something else because right now by default it's set to a blend mode of over so I need to switch it to multiply and that'll go ahead and work now you can see that here's the before color swatch for the uh, color map and here's the after looks dirty and grimier now okay now the color map doesn't really need a blending mode so we'll just set that to none and the cavity map you have to make sure set to multiply so I'll go ahead and I'll close that attribute editor and I'll go back to the render view over here and I'm gonna go ahead and render this out again okay so there's the cavity map that's the way it looks now it looks a little bit more interesting there's sort of these little dark plots and splotches and things like that so it looks a little bit dirtier and a little bit more natural you can see especially in the background area over there it looks a little bit more natural a little bit more believable but the scaling right now is incorrect okay so let's go back to the hypershade and we need to go to the place 2d texture node here open that uh, that node up and we have to set the repeats for the U and V's to 4 and 4 okay so it matches up with the color map as well as the bump map now let's go back to the uh, render view here and let's render out again okay perfect so here we go this looks a lot better you can see that now you can you can tell you can actually see the dirt and the grime in the ground looks more natural looks more believable than before we can see these nice dark splotches and they sort of fade out and then you have areas that are just brown uh, with some sand and dirt and then you have these areas that are just nice and darkened just looks more realistic and more believable and makes a huge difference for the uh, for the ground texture for that terrain texture it looks fantastic if we go back to the hyper shade this is what the uh, what the whole thing looks like okay we've got a bump map we've got a cavity map and a color map the color map and the dirt map or the cavity map as I call it are going into this layer texture node here and the layer texture node is going right into the color of the Lambert okay so it's uh, it's a pretty neat uh, system. Now it's not too complex, but it's a little bit more complex than before. We're using the layer texture node here, and we added the cavity map. But we can actually make this look even better. Okay, so I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to end this video here because it's been going on for a few minutes already. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can create a custom setup with an ambient occlusion node from Mental Ray in the Hypershade to go ahead and make this shader or this texture look even better than this. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here and we'll do that in the next video.